how to actually do the sketching component of it. Um, but I'm just going to run you through the initial idea generation component of your folio. Now, this part of your folio, the initial idea generations, comes after existing ideas. So if we think about logical flow, the clients come to you and says, hey, I want you to make me a piece of furniture. That's the brief. Then you've done a statement of intent. This is your project proposal where you've said, cool, you want a piece of furniture. I'm going to make you a coffee table. Then you've gone and done some research into coffee tables that are already on the market. That was your existing ideas. You researched five of them at least. You then went and got some annotations of the characteristics and features. Maybe you did this via a positive and negative chart. And then you've evaluated which parts of those designs you're going to bring into your own ideas for how to produce the coffee table for this client. So we're now up to initial idea generations. This is where we put together a couple of preliminary sketches that we start to form some shape around what do we actually think this coffee table that you're planning to produce might look like. Now these are certainly not final designs, so they do not have all finished dimensions and all of the possible joinery and, and they're not ready to go in the workshop for you to start making. These are initial sketches. That being said, they are not stick drawings. They are good quality sketches rendered, usually going to include a range of different views. And that's pretty much the standard that we're looking for. You need to make sure that you've used the features from your existing ideas research that you've done and start bringing them into the sketches that you're completing. You then need to evaluate each of your sketches to determine if they meet the needs of the client, they meet the needs of the brief, they meet the criteria for success that you developed as part of your statement of intent. It says here at least four design sketch uh, concepts should be generated. That's correct. Again, my magic number is five, so I would recommend you stick with five, but four is, is what I would consider the absolute minimum. Sketches should be scanned, not photographed, and then put in your folio as a nice, high quality, high resolution scan. So let's have a look at what this can look like in a student's project. Here you can see some initial sketches. The student has drawn a top view, just to give you a bit of an idea of the, the floor plan. They've then presented an isometric style drawing. Okay. In fact, uh, this might be more of a cabinet style drawing. It's not an isometric, flat at the front, heads off in the, uh, in the angles towards the back and side only. It's got annotations around features. So no glass on this side, open glass at the front. No glass means there might be dust on the items. No legs means it's gonna be sitting on the ground, made from Tasmanian oak, using a range of butt joints, dovetail joints, etc. You can see all those annotations there. Idea number two, slightly different design, sketch is a little, little less uh, clear to see, but the annotations say there's glass all the side, all the way around, good visibility, lots of shelves. Shelves are gonna be put in using housing joints. Again, we're talking Tasmanian oak. There's no storage drawer, which doesn't satisfy the statement of intent. See how they've linked in? Well, here's an idea, but it doesn't meet the criteria. The frames have glass in them. The frames are too large, might obstruct the vision of the display. There's a little bit of detail on the legs. You can see the legs there are 42 by 42 by 50 mils. There's two sketches, one single page, two sketches. And then over on the right in that magic colored text box is the evaluation, justifying each design, whether they meet the criteria, whether you're going to pursue them. The student then continues to develop. Each sketch gets better and better and better until we get to our final design, which we decide is the one that the student's going to pursue. And the quality of sketching gets better. The annotations are fantastic there. Starts giving us some real good detail about the dimensions, real good detail about the materials, the glass, what sort of glass they're going to use, what sort of overhangs are there, what sort the of joints. Okay. Lots of good detail there. This is what we're looking for in our initial ID generation. Three to five pages, bit of a guide there. You can do one or two drawings to a page. 
but definitely you need to have a valuation for each drawing in some way. So I've gone and done some sketches. Okay, I did these on the whiteboard. I took a photo of the whiteboard and have a look at that. Because I took a photo, my image is really dark, gray brown color on this really bright white page. When that prints, it honestly looks terrible. And it's for that reason that we ask you not to actually draw your sketches on paper and then take photographs. Draw them on paper, but scan them in so you get better quality images. Now, I've got that there. You can see I did top, front, and side. I've then drawn a 3D isometric. See the little red dotted lines to show you that it does line up. That's how top, front, and, and side views should be presented. They should actually line up. And your 3D isometric off to the side. Then I've got a little table here that I'm using to evaluate it. What were the criteria from my criteria for success? How am I going to measure if they're successful? And then based on this image and this measurement, what sort of rating do they get? This one says the criteria is the size of the product specifically needs to have a floor space less than 500 by 500. This only got one out of five stars because when I drew it up, it was a meter by a meter or whatever it might be. Now, that's not clear in mine because I haven't annotated my drawings. So as with previous videos and future videos that I'll show you, annotate like this. Either draw on your sketches before you scan them in or copy. Insert, drawing, new, paste your image, and then use the arrow tool to draw in your annotations. Draw as many as you need to. Oops, draw in your annotations. Okay, there you go. Okay. As many areas as you need to, use the text box to write in the information to help with your annotation. Okay, add in, save and close. And then there you go, your image with your annotations will appear above. And if you did that, multiplied by four or five sketches, that's your four to five pages filled for this section. But let's have a look back at the question and think, have we answered all elements? Prepare some preliminary sketches, yes. Incorporate the characteristics and features, yes, I did that in my annotations, you're gonna do much more detail than mine. Have I used a rating system? Yes. Have I got at least four sketches? Yes. Are they scanned or photographed? No minor photograph, but I will go back and sketch them. Tick, tick, tick. I'm ready now to move on to my areas of research. Hope that one's been real helpful for you. Good luck with it. If you've got any questions, let me know.